All right, guys, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> so I just uh, got on my old YouTube account there and saw that I have just got a hundred subscribers, and um, my hundredth subscriber, Ultra Turtles, suggested I do a game room tour for this hundred hundred subscribers special. And you know, I have kind of been putting off doing one of these because my game room down here is um, a bit unfinished. Um, there's a lot of stuff I still need to put up, like artwork and things like that. But um, for the most part, <clears throat> I would say it's about 80% done. There's a lot more I want to do with it, but, um, you know, it's coming together. So I figured, you know, what the hell, uh, if I want to do a completed one later on, I can do a completed one later on. Why don't I just go ahead and show you guys the game room? <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and sort of give a big pan around. There are my books, which you always see in the background. And there's where we do the classic stuff, and there's where I sit. So that, and those are the lights that I use down here to kind of give me more light because I purposely put only a few lights in the ceiling to make this place kind of a little bit, um, you know, darker. So, because I play games and watch movies down here. So, um, you know, I guess I'll just go around and show you everything. I don't know. This one might be a little long, but um, <clears throat> like I said, we just got this um, basement finished in... Uh, July. It was finally done in July. And um, it was a horrible experience. You guys, when you guys hire contractors, um, definitely <laughs> definitely make sure that they finish the job before they um, skip town on you. So, Anyway, um, I had to finish this myself, which will account for some of the roughness down here. But, you know, other than that, it, it came together pretty well. So let's just go through the bookshelves here. I'm going to be doing books here for a little bit. Oh, as you can see, there's my Star Trek ornaments. We just took down the Christmas tree, so i got to put them back in their boxes down there and save them for next year. Except for the ones that I keep out for display. But um, on the bookshelf here, I am a huge Hunter S. Thompson fan. I love Hunter S. Thompson. Um, his work is funny, insightful, and it's just, it's, you know, it just has this huge nugget of truth about the way, you know, America kind of is nowadays. So, um, and then next to him, of course, you have to have the S F. Scott Fitzgerald. It just kind of goes, <clears throat> you know, hand in hand a little bit. So down here, we continue with F. Scott Fitzgerald. I'm not going to point out everything. I think you guys can read what's on there. Kind of, you know, I don't know, maybe, uh... Maybe it'll, none of this stuff will be, you know, too, uh, too unbelievable for me. I guess you guys probably don't really know me all that well on here yet, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, I like, um, I like weird books. I like, uh, uh, this one I haven't read. I'm only reading it because I don't really agree with the philosophy, but I figure if you don't agree with something, you better at least know what you're not agreeing with. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. And then down here, this is getting hard to see, but we got some Beach Boys books, and then we got, you know, a couple Beatles books, Radiohead, Marilyn Manson, Will, um, Flaming Lips, Wilco, Thelonious Monk. Ah, this is one right here. There you go. That's a fantastic book. If you guys like Mystery Science Theater like I do, fantastic stuff. Um, there's some old stuff there, some Star Trek art books, Star Wars art books. And up here, <clears throat> I'm a huge sci-fi, you know, fantasy nerd. Oh, um, Moxie. I don't know if any of you guys live in the northeastern part of America, but you guys are um, very lucky to have Moxie <laughs> around. Here in Ohio, we don't have it. I just happened to find this at uh, Jungle Gems down in Cincinnati, so <clears throat> delicious. Um, these right here, Patrick Rothfuss, um, The Name of the Wind and Wise Man's Fear. My, This is my favorite book of all time. I know it just came out not too many years ago, but my God, these two books were amazing. If you guys like fantasy and you haven't re read these books, definitely go out and get them. And we got the Harry Potters, of course. And we got Dune. I love Dune. I love Frank Herbert. Um, so we continue with Frank Herbert there. And, you know, more Frank Herbert until we get to right there. We got George Orwell. Uh, there they are, the uh, Game of Thrones books. I haven't read Dance of Dragons yet, <clears throat> but um, I plan on getting into it here soon. I'm, I'm actually thinking about rereading the whole series because it's like there's just so much that goes on. I, I, I kind of half remember everything because it's been a while since I've read Feast for Crows, but we'll see. And you got your Lord of the Rings there. Uh, that's getting kind of dark over here. And the Wheel of Time. And as you notice, it just keeps going and going and going. And there's still another book to come out, so craziness. Yeah, more fantasy. 
More fantasy. Ursula Le Guin. Fantastic stuff. If you guys haven't read Ursula Le Guin, <clears throat> definitely go out and find some of her stuff. Um, I actually recommend The Left Hand of Darkness. I actually really love this book and couldn't put it down. And then down here, oh, this right here, I gotta show this off. Bone by Jeff Smith. Um, you know, living in Ohio, he's kind of a local hero here since he was from Columbus. Um, this is a fantastic book. I think they're getting ready to come out with a full color version of the one volume. But if you guys like graphic novels or manga or anything like that, definitely go out and find this because, I mean, this starts off really silly. But by the end of it, it's fucking Lord of the Rings. It's just epic. So definitely go check this out, guys. Uh, get back in there. Douglas Adams. Hooray, hurrah. H.P. Lovecraft. And McAfee. And up here, I got my pipe tobacco. Let me get this out of the road. I, I don't smoke a pipe very often, but you know, on the occasion I do enjoy it. Yeah, David Weber. Some of my graphic novels. I don't have very many anymore. I don't really collect comic books anymore. I got Serenity, V for Vendetta, Watchmen, Ray Bradbury's 450, Fahrenheit 451, The Dark Knight and Dark Knight Strikes Back, and uh, Kingdom Come. And then just a few more, a few more fantasy books. These right here, <clears throat> definitely go out and get these. The movie was awesome. These are just as awesome. They're fantastic books. I can't believe how good these really were. Um, I'm going to be looking out for this Brian Lee O'Malley from now on. He put out one before this. I haven't got around to getting it yet because I haven't found it. I mean, I can just order it online, but whatever. This is a good book. This is what I'm currently reading right now, Red Mars by Kim Stanley Robinson. I love the idea of colonizing Mars, and it breaks my heart. You know, that NASA basically had the legs cut out from under it. Um, but I guess, you know, when uh, we have a bunch of politicians misspending our money, you know, my dreams of space exploration are just, you know, are supposed to wither on the vine. But uh, this so far, I'm about that far into it. This is fantastic. So if you guys have any, um, you know, wanting to read about colonization of Mars, this is actually uh, very fantastic. And down here, I got nonfiction stuff, mostly biographies. Um, this. <clears throat> now, when this happened, I was in, I don't know if that picks up, Columbine by Dave Cullen. I was actually a sophomore in high school when this happened, and um, this book is just, I mean, I read it, and uh, it's hard to say it's a good book because of what it's, what it's about, but um, I definitely think everyone should read it. Because we can never let, you know, this the kind of stuff needs to stop happening. This is just ridiculous. But um, there are moments in this book where, like, I was reading it standing up and I had to literally sit down because my knees just got weak. Because it's just, it's horrific. But you know, I think everyone should, I think it should be required reading in high school. And yeah, Noam Chomsky and yeah, Barack Obama books. Yeah, you can see what kind of defense I, I rely on. Oh, look, there's, there's more. Oh, anyway. That's okay. And then down here, I found this at a Comic Con for five dollars. That's something. Dawn, the Final Fantasy. It only goes up to I think Final Fantasy four, but still some fantastic artwork in there. And then down here, oh, we're spending a lot of time on these books, but that's okay. Books are cool. You know, just got my uh, strategy guides there. I guess I could get closer so you guys can see it, but I don't really think. Yeah, no one really cares. Maybe. Yes, I have two Final Fantasy XII books. I had this one to begin with, and then I found this one at a half price books for really cheap. And it's got you know all that artwork on it, so I figured that'd be cool. And Skyward Sword. There's my Lunar Eternal Blue one that I actually you know uh, Ball and Nick told me is actually worth a, you know somewhere between sixty and a hundred dollars. So I might need to put that somewhere else. And there's that. So all right, let's get up. Now we come around here. <clears throat> now this is where the retro stuff happens. This chair and this entertainment center, which about broke my back getting down here. So over here, you know, we got my Genesis and Master System games with uh, Chrono Trigger figures and my slime from Dragon Quest VI. And I like to keep my um, Genesis games in this cassette deck thing. I don't know. It just it's easier to store them than in the boxes, which are uh, right there. <laughs> That probably just made everyone vomit watching that, but, you know, oh well. So, I uh, got some, uh, haven't talked too much about music and stuff. I think I'm going to start doing that, but I got some, I've been listening to some Bill Hicks here recently. 
So, yeah. And you got Pure Solar there, and over here we got NHL 95 and Shadow of the Beast, which don't fit into these cassette decks. So those EA ones, guys, you have to kind of keep in your cases. And then down here, it's kind of dark, but I got my GBA SP, my DS Lite, my DSi XL, my new 3DS, and then that's where the PSP goes, but I'm playing it right now, so <clears throat> it's upstairs. And then we have my PS1 and my Sega Saturn. I don't keep the PS1 hooked up because... Um, I can play them on my PS2, and the only thing I really use that for is like the Final Fantasy anthologies. Um, Saturn, I just don't have very many games for the Saturn, so I kind of hook it up as an, uh, on, you know, on need basis. And then down here, this is something I didn't actually do a collection video for, and I recently figured out that, you know, I kind of screwed up on that, but that is my, I'm blocking the light, that is my, um, Atari 2600 collection. If you guys want, want me to do a 2600 you know, collection video, let me know, and I'll I'll throw one up there. Um, there's another system I didn't do a collection video for, and I, I do plan on doing one for that, but I don't know. So this is my entertainment center. This thing has been through um, three moves now, and uh, it's still holding up really, 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 really well. Um, I'm really surprised at how well this thing is holding up, because I've had to take it apart and put it back together quite a few times, so... Um, Oh, there's another thing I didn't do my collection video for. I have a Game Gear. I haven't done a collection video for that. So let me know if you want to see that, too. I'm a huge Star Trek fan, so I got my Enterprises up here. This is my favorite version of any ship in Star Trek ever. The NCC-1701A. That is just, I mean, a gorgeous ship. And, you know, the new Abrams Enterprise is actually really awesome as well. I, I You know, like everyone, I was shocked to hell about it. But then it came out, and I was like, yeah, you know, that's pretty good. So... And then down here we got the Max, which is probably my favorite Image comic book. It was just so insane. <clears throat> Spawn was a close second, but I love the Max. I love the cartoon, too, from the MTV, you know, Liquid Television and everything. It was awesome. Then I got my Buffy the Vampire Slayer figure. That's right. Sarah Michelle Gellar in plastic form. Gotta love it. Okay. Down here, got my old um, record player here. I do enjoy listening to things on vinyl. And now that the CDs are supposed to be phased out, I'll probably just go to buying straight vinyl instead of you know MP3 downloads. And my CD player there. <clears throat> and down here is just an empty shelf with my. Um, I got the newspaper edition of King of Limbs, the new Radiohead album. And uh, I'm trying to keep the newspaper as nice as possible, so it's in the the plastic. And down here we got my LPs. Of course, there's Pet Sounds. I don't know if there's anything really. <clears throat> I got a lot of Beach Boys stuff. I got the, a new version of Sunflower. Um, these are cool. I don't know if you guys like the Decemberists. You know, I don't know what people's music. Ouch! The people's music's tastes are, but um, these are um, the three singles that they put out, and they're um, very awesome. Actually, Record Year for Rainfall is probably my favorite December song ever, and that's not on a, you know, a normal release. You had to get these, you know, special vinyl ones. But, um, got the Godspeed You Black Emperors on vinyl. Uh, just a bunch of old stuff that I found at, um, you know, old stores. Then here I got my Johnny Cash, um, Folsom Prison, or no, San Quentin, sorry, San Quentin. Uh, Nirvana's box set, the Beach Boys Pet Sounds. I was listening to a bunch of Beach Boys here lately because of this thing. But uh, there's my smile. Getting out of breath, man. This, these are hard. There's my wife. So if you guys ever wonder what my wife looks like, there she is. Uh, this is my best friend in high school and me and Obi Wan Kenobi. This is back when I was in high school. And we got Jesus hanging out with the Buddhas. Why not? That was a picture of us at a John Kerry rally in Zanesville that, uh, we got drenched. And there's another picture of my wife. And then down here, this is for, I guess, Ultra Turtles, since, you know, it's a 100 video and everything, and he's my 100th subscriber, so I love the turtles too, so there you go. <laughs> and we got uh, Boba Fett, the Enterprise D, and Django Fett. Let me get these Decemberist videos out of the way. Okay. And we got Ult Optimus Prime, that's the 25th anniversary edition that came out, um, I don't remember how many years ago. And then next to him we have Unicron, which I've always wanted them to do a Unicron figure. And uh, this one was cool, but, you know, it was also kind of disappointing in a way. I don't know. I kind of wish he was bigger. I know. Whatever. 
Then here we have Robocop. That is the McFlarren Toys one. I also have a boxed one in the storage room, um, over in the laundry room. And then we have the, um, oh, I can't remember what these guys are called. It's been so long since I bought these. I don't think they have the name on them anywhere, but um, the little guys. And you know, it's crazy because if you look up at the helmet, you can see Robocop has a face, but you can't get that helmet off, and it used to drive me crazy, and I wanted to buy another box of them so I could try to get that helmet off, but oh well. Game systems! This is what you guys are watching this shit for, right? So we got my master system here, not hooked up. The Xbox is hooked up. Super's hooked up. N64 is hooked up. Sega Genesis and the NES is hooked up. And then down here, I have the Famicom and the PC Engine not hooked up. Because, you know, the Japanese games, I don't need them hooked up all the time. So Then over here, we have my NES games. A couple Master System games. My Dreamcast games are all falling over because for some reason Ducks does not want to hold them up. Then we have um, Turbo Views, Spido 1A. You guys have not watched his stuff. Definitely go check it out. He does um, all. He's going to review every um, American released Turbo Graphics game because he has them all. So um, I bought his two DVDs because I definitely want to support him because I love seeing this stuff. He does pinball, yeah, pinball videos also. So definitely check out his channel, Spida, S-P-I-D-A, one A. Definitely great stuff. And then down here we have my first copy of Shenmue 2, which um, I bought it and it got chewed up by a dog. So then I found a really cheap copy somewhere else and got a good working or a good looking copy. This one is actually fully playable and has everything in it. I just that label was destroyed and I couldn't find a replacement label. And then, I haven't showed these off. These are my soundtracks, which most of these came from, um, you know, individual just like the, the releases. Like that's Radiant Historia. The Lunar from the PSP, Solo to Robo, Silent Hill 2. Now, I did purchase this from Japan, and uh, this is an excellent soundtrack. Fantastic. I love the music from Silent Hill 2. And I, in fact, I love most of the music from Silent Hill ever. I don't think I've talked about that as much. Silent Hill music is fantastic, although Downpour is going to have a different composer, and I don't know if I'm really going to like it or not, so I guess we'll see when it comes out. Then Oath and Felgana, 1 and 2 Chronicles, Trails in the Sky, and then my copy of Lunar 2 soundtrack that I did purchase separately because um, my copy of Lunar 2 did not have a CD soundtrack with it. I bought it um, not loose, but it was just in the, the plastic case, so I had to track this down and get that. Then we got the Tatori soundtrack, E7. Uh, a pirated copy of Snatcher for the Sega CD. Whoops, let's, let's keep that away. Uh, this is something stupid I got. I think I got this with the Nintendo Power. It's just a Pokemon Presidency of the United States of America. Who remembers them, right? And then, of course, my Xenoblade and my Last Story soundtrack, which um, those two are amazing. And this one's a lot more subtle. Like, Xenoblade, I think everyone can get into. Uh, the Last Story soundtrack is a lot more subtle than um, Xenoblade, and it took me a long time to get into this, but now I really love this soundtrack, so definitely check that out. Um, the R. Trinelico Coca, I don't know how to say that last word, but that came with the, the box set. And then this I actually ordered way back in the day. This is my Final Fantasy VI complete soundtrack from Japan. Um, fantastic stuff. Had to have this. I mean, this game ruled my life for the longest time, so... Got my soundtracks down there. I do plan on, um, I need to get more shelving units for down here. Okay, then here I got my Game Boy games, and this is something I haven't done a collection review for, my Game Boy games and my Game Boy Advance games, so that's another thing. If you guys want to see it, um, I'll do it, but, um, you know, I don't know. Unless I'm, unless I'm really pressed for videos, I'm, I probably won't do it, unless you guys really want to see it. Then I got my uh, box Super Famicom, and then my loose Super Famicom. Um... There's my bromides that I got from the X Seed order, so I'm keeping those sealed. And there's just some extra pamphlets, like and that's the art book I got with Demon Souls pamphlet for Dragon Quest Nine from any retail store. These are something I'm getting into making. I really enjoy making these. This is the hero from Dragon Quest Three, and then I got, of course, I had to have a Mega Man. And um, I think next, my next project is going to be a sprite version of Samus in the Zero suit. So that'll be fun. I gotta buy more beads though. 
some of my loose Game Boy Advance games. I haven't got around the casing yet. Um, uh, Sigma Star. Oh, I can't read it. Sigma Star Saga. And then Golden Sun, because I'm playing it. Uh, Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. And Botkai. So, those are sitting out, just waiting to be boxed. Uh, Super Nintendo games. I did a collection video for those, so don't need to go through those. There's my N64 games. If you guys can think of a great way to display these, because these things are just so freaking hard to display, because they don't have a spine label, and it's just that, that's that's the best way I can think of doing it. So I don't know. Uh, my PC Engine games, and my Sega Saturn, and my two Sega CD Lunar games. Okay, right over here we got my DS collection, and my th one 3DS game down there. Uh, PSP, Xbox, and then there are my Game Boy Advance games, which, with Game Boy Advance, I do have some boxes for these, but for the most part, I've just bought a bunch of DS cases and um, put uh, made labels for them, and let's see if I can... Yeah, I've actually cut the inside of the case so it, it'll accommodate the, the manuals. So. Sorry, guys, this video is going to be <laughs> all over the place because... Um, uh, these are TV on DVD sets that, um, I have all my TV on DVD in a binder because we used to live in a small apartment and I just put all the cases in a box and then put them all in a binder. But these are ones that we've picked up since, uh, moving into the house and I need to buy another one of these monsters here to, uh, load up all my DVDs and then I'll put all these and all the other ones back up on the shelf. But as you can see, we've got Mad Men, True Blood. Um, Twin Peaks and Fire Walk With Me, which I just watched Fire Walk With Me uh, a little bit ago, and it was really good, but you have to watch Twin Peaks first. And then, of course, Star Trek on Blu-ray, Six Feet Under. If you guys have not watched Six Feet Under, go watch it, because um, it's a fantastic series. A few CDs that I need to, um, I'm either going to recase all my CDs, or I'm going to keep them in these two bi big binders. But um, those are ones that I just, I've, I've put, like the Marilyn Manson ones, I've put in back in the cases it's for when I drive, so I don't break them or anything, but um, mostly I keep the CDs in the binders. And then my DVD collection, start up top here. Got the James Bond. Um, I haven't got volume two yet, but uh, they don't fit in these shelves, so I had to put them up there, along with The Great Dictator by Charlie Chaplin. Then I got an autographed um, photo from Doug Jones. Uh, this is when he played the gentleman in the Buffy, the Vampire Slayer, um issue, or issue, episode Hush, but, um, you've seen him in Hellboy, he's Abe Sapien, you saw him in, um, oh, Pan's Labyrinth, he was basically every monster on the screen, so, um, I love Doug Jones, and, uh, he was a super nice guy, super personable, and then over here I have my autographed picture of Walter Koenig from Star Trek and Babylon 5, got a DeLorean, and then these are my favorite cars of all time, of course we have the Batmobile, and the Johnny Lightning DeLorean, and then the Hot Wheels DeLorean time machine. So as you can see, the Johnny Lightning one is a lot better than the Hot Wheels one. So, gotta get up to Johnny Lightning. And then the Johnny, Johnny Lightning Ecto-1A, and then my big Ecto-1. I love that car. If I ever find a hearse like this for cheap, I'm gonna buy it and make it look like this. And then movies! Movies, movies, movies. I'm not going to point anything out unless I find something, see something really awesome on here, but you guys can see stuff. You know. I don't know if I'll go through everything. Yeah, fuck it, why not? Ooh, sorry. This is now rated R. <laughs> At least in America. Harry Potter's. Fantastic adaptations of the books. Especially five, because um, five, I felt, was like the most unwieldy book of the series, and they really really made this into an excellent movie. I was really surprised with this one, because that book, that was probably my least favorite book, just because it was just it went all over the place. I haven't picked up the Blu-rays yet, I know. I'm getting around to it. This right here, guys. I don't know how many of you guys like silent films, but this thing, except for the, the refound footage they have, this thing looks like it was filmed yesterday. It's just an, it's an amazing achievement, and it really shows you um, what Blu-ray can do, because this looks like it was filmed yesterday. Fantastic. Monster Squad! Kick the Wolfman and the Nards! Knocking everything over. There we go. Game room tours are fun. Now, you see, there's a lot of space in here, because I just got this big thing. 
Yeah. Um, I just got I don't got the Blu-rays of these yet either. Um, <laughs> here's something. Yeah. Gotta have that, right? Best video game movie ever. But um, I just got this big, huge um, thing here, and uh, it definitely freed up a lot of space. And now I'm gonna have to go buy more DVDs. Uh, my big X-Men box set thing for 1 and 2, and then X3 is also upstairs. We just got done watching those. And my wife agrees with me that X3 is a steaming pile of crap. Yay. This is probably really boring, so... If this is boring, guys, I apologize. Um, oh, oh, god damn it. This thing's hard to hold on to. Oh, wrong side. Uh, if you guys haven't seen this movie... Uh, stop watching this right now and go out and buy it. That's all I'm going to say on that. That's all I'm going to say. We got the dead movies. This is my little bit of horror movies that we have. We don't... My wife really likes horror, but I'm not a big fan of horror. I like some stuff, but not all. And we got a couple westerns down here. I, lo I love the western genre. And I need to get more into it. This... This is the Lord of the Rings of the Westerns, guys. If you guys have not seen Once Upon a Time in the West, the Blu-ray just came out a little while ago. Um, go out and buy it. I swear to you. I swear to you. This is one of the most epic movies of all time. Fantastic. There you go, ball and neck. <laughs> Got the clerks. Oh, yeah, this is probably really boring. I'm sorry, guys. This is probably not a very good video. Probably not what you wanted, but, uh, you know, whatever. It's going to be a long one, too. God, I've, I've put up two really long videos. A lot of these are my wife's movies now because we're moving into, like, uh, oh, there. That's actually really awesome, guys. If you haven't seen the 70th anniversary Blu ray edition of Gone with the Wind, um, you need to go watch it. You, you won't believe your eyes. This movie will make you cry. I don't care who you are. The first ten minutes of this movie, you will bawl like a child. I don't care how hard-hearted you are. There's no getting away from that movie. See, this, these are easy to do because now the rows are really short. Very excellent movie. If you guys like Joy Division, check this out. Like it. Like I said, this is a rated R. Don't show it to your mom. Great Gardens. That was a good one. Yeah, actually, you want to talk about this. This is actually extremely fantastic because, as you'll see later, I do have the documentary of Great Gardens. And what these two did playing, you know, um, Little and Big Edie, it's just mind-blowing. Especially Drew Barrymore. Just mind-blowing. Excellent performances. We're almost to the end of the DVDs, guys. I know. This is a game channel, not a movie channel. But, you know, I figured if I just went through these, sh if I just quickly showed these shelves, people would be like, hey, man, what's on the shelves? What are you hiding? And I'd say, we're hiding showgirls. Yes, we own showgirls. So, okay, now we get down to the musicals, which, if you guys haven't watched this, fantastic. And that ending where it just twists, oh my god. Joss Whedon, you, you are a god. I will follow you anywhere. My wife likes musicals. Except for this one. This is actually mine. That's right. This is a fantastic movie. Watch it. And then my limited... Um, well, this isn't really anime. Secret of Nim's not anime. But my limited anime. I actually had more and I got rid of it. But I kept Akira, Last Exile, Endless Waltz, and Vampire Hunter D. Documentaries... Like I said, Bill Hicks. Check this out. It's actually a really good movie. Really enjoyed it. And then there's the Grey Gardens. And, yeah, Beals of Grey Gardens. Hunter S. Thompson stuff. These two are actually um, bootlegs. This is a bunch of uh, 
Yeah, the best of Hunter S. Thompson is a bunch of like interviews. It's actually really low quality and it's kind of hard to make out. This is actually a film by Wayne Ewing, and I'm going to go on sometime and buy. He budget he made a bunch of Hunter S. Thompson films. He lived with or lived around Hunter for a, a long period of time, and I'm, I'm now that I know that there's a, a legitimate copy out there, I'm going to go buy it so he gets supported. Moon Race, kind of silly. Most of this stuff is like the the Scream one and the Star Wars one. And the Kubrick one, that's all from the box sets. NASA. Down here's my music DVDs, which got Beach Boys, got the Beatles Anthology. Bjork. This. Fearless Freaks. Fantastic. Fantastic, you know, biogra biographical film on a band. Uh, everyone should watch this. Even if you don't like the Flaming Lips, you should watch it. Fantastic stuff. And then here's another great Christmas movie, Christmas on Mars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pavement, Radiohead. Oh, this thing. Uh, this is my Tool Salival box set. This is actually a... Uh, this is horrible. Um, this is incomplete because it does not have the CD. Because back when I was a young, stupid kid, I kept all my CDs in a big binder like that. But um, I put the binder in the back seat of my car, and guess what happened? Yeah, that's right. My car got broken into, and all those CDs got stolen. So the Salival CD, gone. But I still have the DVD, so I guess that's something. All right. I'll get back up there. This is, Like I said, it's going to be all over the place. There's my TV. There's my GameCube, which I'll show you here in a minute. That's Those are the games I'm going to be playing here in order. Then we got the 360, the Wii, the PS2, and the PS3. And as you see, there's wires going this way because I'm currently playing the Dreamcast. And I'll show you what game I'm playing. But um, this is where I always set. Actually, you can see my butt indentation there. And then there's my Snuggie. And uh, a hooded sweatshirt because it gets cold down here. So this is where I normally set and play. So this is the view. When I'm looking at talking to you guys, that's usually the view I'm looking at. But uh, down, yep, got the uh, Dreamcast all hooked up. I'll show you what I'm playing. These are fantastic digestives. Um, anyone living over in England, you know that these are fantastic. And uh, I can't, I, they're so expensive over here. They're like, they're like five bucks for the dark chocolate ones, but I can't stop buying them. <sighs> Remotes, coffee mug from this morning. Parker Lewis can't lose. You guys remember this show? I found these, I found the two uh, seasons of the uh, DVDs for really cheap, so. Been watching those, reliving old memories. Then over here, that's a notepad to keep track of game stuff. Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 9. A couple of the new uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics. And then Postland um, by a friend of mine from high school, Jeremy Baum. It's, um, actually, I was thinking about doing a video for this, but I will show it to you anyway. Very surrealist type stuff in here. Um, as you see, there's some titties. So if you guys like titties, there's plenty of titties in this. But um, I've been thinking about doing a video for this on its own, but I don't know how to approach it. So, um, But if anything in that looked um, interesting, there's the website. And uh, th this guy, was uh, he went to high school with me. He was a couple years ahead of me. And uh, when he told me that he put this out, I've always loved his drawing, so I had to pick it up. So let's go over here. This is the queue. Right now we got Grandia 2 going on the Dreamcast. Next is going to be Digital Devil Saga. Then I'm going to finish up Atelier Rorona. Breath of Fire, Muramasa the Demon Blade, going to finish that up. Going to go back and restart Lost Odyssey because, honest to God, I don't know where the hell I'm at in that game. And uh, I really want to do finish it because everyone keeps going on about how great it is. I played it for a long time and then something came out and distracted me and I never went back. So I'm going to get that finished. Uh, Bat and Kaidos, I'm going to get that started. And then I just recently played Sui Coden about a couple months ago, so now I'm going to go to Sui Coden 2. And then we're going to wrap it up with Disgaea 1 and get started in that series. So, there's the Wii Fit board that we don't use, and there's some trash. Sweetest, Swedish fish. That probably made everyone nauseous. Um, there is my Link and my Mario, and this was actually a gift from my best friend um, to be his best man at his wedding. So, got a nice dagger there. And there's my Wii stuff with my receipt on top. For where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Can't see it. Ah, there it is. Xenoblade Chronicles. Nice. So, we 360. The end of the 360 PS3, and there's my old um, 
Xbox hard drive. God, couldn't think. And down here we got GameCube because I play them all on the Wii. And then PS1. And then PS2, which things are falling over, of course. And then there are my special edition boxes until I get more shelf space to put them back in the boxes and keep them on there. So, turn around without getting blinded by the, the lights. That was the game room. Um, like I said, there is a bunch of artwork that I still want to put up. But, um, you know, this uh, was a huge undertaking to, do, uh, to uh, finish this basement. Mostly because the guy we hired was a complete and utter tool. And uh, we're still smarting from it, obviously. But now I got my basement and uh, my game room, and my wife's happy because all my stuff is now down here. So that was a game room tour um, for the 100th subscriber special edition video. Um, I want to thank all of you guys um, for subscribing to me because um, I, it's just it's ridiculous. Because I've I was starting. I was thinking about doing this a while ago, and I was like, well, you know, no one's really going to want to sit and listen to me talk. And um, just to know that there's a hundred of you guys out there that like listening to me enough to subscribe to me is uh, really cool. And I'm really happy that um, all of you have found something in this channel to enjoy. So, um, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do next for a video. I wasn't really planning on doing this. I kind of just shot it off the cuff because I saw the comment and was like, well, you do a game room tour, so I was like, sure, why not? Actually, let me show you how dark it is down here without this awful thing on. Because it's, it's hardly ever on, but you see how, oh, yeah. Look at the mood. Look how the mood changes. Fantastic. I love it. I don't like bright lights. So, anyway, guys, um, I'll do another video here soon. I still need to do a discussion video on Wild Arms. <laughs> I try to do it, and um, it just, I don't know, I, I just start babbling incoherently, so... Um, I might just, you know, quickly just do a quick, like, three-minute one where I don't try to discuss everything. But, um, 